So let's connect with uh, V. Vednathan, Managing Director and CEO of IDFC First Bank. Uh, you know, before, uh, Mr. Vednathan, good morning. Thank you for joining us. You know, I was thinking about it when I was preparing for the interview that life's been a full circle for you. I mean, from being a banker to an NBFC promoter, now to being a banker promoter, uh, it must be a great feeling, right? <laughs> it seems wonderful, but I don't use the term banker promoter, certainly not. But yes, uh, uh, indeed, uh, as, an, as a non-banking finance company, our eventual ambition was to convert to a bank. Uh, so this was a great opportunity, and I think it worked well for both parties. The numbers are not comparable, and that's largely because the merger integration is at place. And frankly, markets are not going to judge you based on what we've got in terms of numbers. But markets would like to understand from you that what are the three things you would do? How will you hit the ground running to make sure that uh, IDFC bank migration and capital first migration um, is well received? Uh, if you don't mind, just before we come to the question, for the benefit of viewers, can we just set some base about what the numbers as a result of the merger are uh, and what the combined entity looks like? And then I will straight jump into your question, if you don't mind. Go ahead. So uh, basically, uh, as a result of the merger, the, uh, the loan book of the bank actually has moved from rupees uh, 75,000 crores last quarter, that is quarter 2, 2019, to 1,4600 crores. That's a substantial jump. Second is the, the funded, the retail loan book has increased from rupees 9,900 crores to rupees 36,236 crores in this quarter because of the merger. Number three, the retail proportion as a percentage of the book has increased from 13% in quarter two, 2019 to 35% in quarter three. That's a big straight jump of retail which is diversified. And number four, the net interest margin has increased from 1.7% last quarter for IDFC Bank standalone to 3.27% now, which is rather healthy uh, as IDFC First Bank. So I'd like to just, I wanted to put these numbers out of the way, and then I'd take your question from here on. I mean, it's important for us to set the base and then build on that base. Uh, my next obvious question would be, is that there is a long-term vision and there is a uh, there is a short term uh, view. So first, your long term vision was very well articulated by you when the merger was announced and we've interacted and we've talked about it on the various forums. But in next three to four quarters, what should we see and expect from the merged entity, both in terms of synergies, cost saving, and uh, then, uh, uh, you know, uh, client leveraging? No, it's absolutely the appropriate question. Uh, in the short run, let me say in the next one year, uh, m uh, mainly the integration processes are in play. Uh, secondly, I must, I'm very happy to share with all viewers that the integration is, per is, is, uh, is progressing on perfectly on, on expected lines. Uh, the two organizations have come together. We've integrated the people, integrated the technology, integrated the processes, integrated the risk management systems, integrated the operations. All these processes have the big, big building blocks, so to say, have actually been put in place. This integration process, of course, will go on for one more year, but I'm happy to share with you it's, 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 it's progressing very well. Uh, number two, uh, what has happened is that because of the merger, uh, as I described to you a moment ago, the, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the coming together of the capital first loan book of uh, close to about 30,000 crores uh, has added straight profitability to the franchise because that business was uh, generating a return on equity of close to 15 to 15 and a half percent. And uh, that has, uh, uh, let me say, lifted uh, or given the, uh, a strong base uh, to the future earning numbers. Uh, number three, I must say that the uh, core uh, IDFC bank model, uh, let me say erstwhile IDFC bank model of uh, building and rolling out the retail bank branches uh, and, um, uh, is, is and, and building the technology platform for rolling out is really excellent. And that base coupled with the retail lending base of Capital First, uh, let me say if you wanted to get a picture of the next 12 months, I'd say the retail loan book could grow by about 25%. Uh, if you take a four, year, four quarters forward of the wholesale loan book, we think it would be rather flat because infrastructure will degrow and corporate will grow. So blend of it would probably be flat. And uh, as a bank, uh, I think the big focus, four quarters, will be growing CASA and retail deposits. The, the fight for CASA 
and the desire to grow retail i guess is something which everybody is trying to adopt whether it is banks or nbfcs or even small banks uh, do you think there is enough and more scope for so many various financial entities to coexist and do you think you will be able to uh, you will be able to uh, uh, you know gain enough and more market share there Uh, first of all, uh, it's uh, it's a very big opportunity. I must share some numbers with you. The CASA numbers in the market are 47 lakh crores, of which close to about 37 lakh crores is savings account balances alone. Uh, to start with, uh, for our bank, our uh, our uh, savings account balances are only about uh, 6,400 crores. I use the word only because uh, it is just a start of the bank as far as uh, this process is concerned. And on that sort of a large marketplace, it's certainly it's it's really an opportunity where you can really uh, swim into. Uh, number two uh, is, is in terms of whether we can scale this up. Uh, certainly we feel so. Uh, you know, last month we launched a, uh, a, a program where we started giving 7% uh, to customers having saving balances with us in excess of rupees 2 lakh rupees. Um, you know, rates alone don't get customers, but I think we're putting together a series of steps uh, with regard to how we can achieve that. Our key focus over the next few years, and certainly for the next four quarters, and if you, even if you take a five-year forward, is uh, CASA retail deposits. That is our key strategy because, as I said to you, the lending business is in really great shape, and there is no reason why they should have a problem on that front. What is your uh, take on IDFC Bank's asset quality? Because a lot has changed when you first analyze it and how IBC laws and NCLT laws have changed. Uh, where do you think the asset quality of IDFC or Earthfile IDFC Bank as a book is headed? Uh, well, uh, at the time the uh, uh, merger was announced, uh, if you recall uh, right on your channel and also on your uh, sister newspaper, so to say, uh, we had made a specific comment on this issue. We said that uh, there were ex a certain set of credit l uh, charges which IDFC Bank is yet to take, but uh, the key quote which you had carried at that point of time is, I count on Dr. R Dr. Lal to take all provisions as necessary before the merger. I am happy to tell you that the, uh, that the uh, prior management did all the good job. Uh, they did all such uh, provisions, of course, about, four, about uh, six to 700 crores. Uh, through the profit and loss account during their tenure itself and therefore on the existing book of IDFC Bank uh, 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 as, as far as our eyes can see uh, at this point of time uh, there are no real bad accounts that are uh, waiting to be taken through the P&L. Of course it's a large book of about uh, 60,000 crores so uh, you know you've got to constantly watch that book like a hawk uh, but uh, nothing that uh, should disturb you at this point of time. Uh it's too early to talk about what is the next, uh, you know, big thing for the merged entity. But can I safely assume that you've already started thinking on uh, building up a strong insurance franchise and AMC business or a brokerage business? Eventually, that's where you headed. <laughs> the, the the answer is uh, none of these. Uh, we want to be entirely focused on banking, and as I see it, banking is very simple and it should be simple you're borrowing money from uh, from from public at large and you're lending it to the public at large or to large corporates and i think uh, the you you borrow at uh, maybe seven percent or so you lend at twelve percent or so you make a net interest margin of about five percent and then you provide for your of your provisions uh, uh, and your operating expenditure and make a profit so we want to be stay uh, truly uh, very simple to this uh, number two uh, as i told you the current loan book uh, itself is close to about one lakh four thousand crore uh, of which the retail uh, book is about uh, 35,000 crores. Uh, in the next five years, uh, I, am, uh, I, I would like to share with you that we have set for ourselves a target of rupees 1 lakh crores of retail book. Uh, the margins of the retail book are much higher, and as a result of such margin coming from a substantially enhanced retail book, we think the, uh, we are targeting for uh, you know, return on assets to grow from about 0.1, 0.2%, that is what we have today, uh, to about 1.5% in due course. Uh, we think that uh, it is a steady state growth. You started the conversation by saying what should investors expect. I would say that people should expect a steady growth in terms of uh, profits and uh, return on equity as the five years uh, rolls out. 
at a time when we are talking about a potential and a strong liquidity squeeze which has happened in the financial market and banks are slightly careful in terms of lending how do you think the dynamics are likely to change in terms of asset liability mismatch you've done a great job of maintaining risk managing npas but uh, the terrain has changed the liquidity constraints are back uh, there are concerns which clearly have emerged in various uh, you know promoter group entities so what is your understanding of the scenario on the asset liability side um i would actually say that we talked of the asset quality of the uh, idfc bank erstwhile book and i told you uh, that after the provisions things are fine uh, I, I, you know uh, as far as capital first loan book which is getting integrated into the storyline uh, i must point out to you that uh, for 8 years at a stretch the gross np stood at around 8 at 2% and the net np stood at about 1% so it was a very stable seasoned book seasoned over cycles and diversified over 7 million customers now we think that story when you fast forward it over the next 8 years or 5 years to compound that about 22 to 25% every year we think that large book should be absolutely okay it should be absolutely fine we expect to behave that way now i would like to comment on the current environment in terms of liquidity and so on uh, i really don't see that really affecting the retail portfolio uh, because two big things have happened of late number one the emergence of credit bureaus is a very strong factor and uh, people are not defaulting on at 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 will and uh, uh, number two uh, with the emergence of uh, analytics and databases uh, the ability to track the customers and be uh, with pinpoint precision uh, uh, is uh, has uh, dramatically increased so with the emergence of ecosystem plus a strong uh, uh, underwriting standards uh, honestly i don't expect uh, any problem in the near near future as far as i can see and just to wrap it up and i don't want to get this messaging wrong for uh, our viewers and for your investors uh, you would be focusing on the retail franchise you are likely to you want to grow that franchise that's where growth and that's where margins and spreads are higher but what happens to the basic bread and butter business the corporate and the msc and the sme and uh, what is uh, what are thoughts there uh those two will be growth areas i told you what we will not do so that can be clear for you we will we don't do investment banking uh, we don't do broking we don't do uh, insurance we don't do either general or life we don't manufacture these products we don't do all those things as far as core banking is concerned we love to do retail banking we told you for the reasons for that and we believe there's a huge market there in the uh, in all segments and certainly the bottom of the pyramid uh, as far as wholesale is concerned there's a very big market there and we want to focus on that in a selective way but certainly it's an important piece for us and we would like to continue to grow that uh, you know there is one question before we sign off uh, which you haven't focused about but if you don't mind i'd like to clarify that to your viewers and investors uh, this quarter the company has posted a loss uh and uh, and and there are questions going around that how come after merger if you really saw the books of the bank how come there is a loss on merger uh i'd like to clarify that for the benefit of your viewers and investors it's an important question to address uh here what has happened is that uh, you know capital first uh was uh, was quoting at a premium uh to its book value by close to about 2600 crores at that time the merger was actually effectuated maybe about a couple of months ago and uh, that premium of 2600 crores substantially represents goodwill when that merger has happened if the combined bank continues to carry this 2600 crores as goodwill then the bank will not be in a position to declare dividends so therefore this 2600 crores has been charged off to the pnl but the net effect is actually neutral and therefore i'd like to point out there is no erosion to the net worth the net worth of the institution actually has increased over the last quarter stand alone is close to about 14700 crores it has now grown to about 18600 crores this the net worth has actually grown and that's the asset test whether any impairment has happened so therefore i'd like to clarify to your shareholders and to everybody there has been no erosion of net worth because of uh, of the merger this is a goodwill that got accounted as a goodwill on the top line and equally got charged off on the bottom line it's a net neutral uh, activity as far as uh, shareholders are concerned and i wish there is no confusion on this front the last question going on social media right now was that is capital first carrying a goodwill on their books which is being merged 
being charged off to the P&L now? The answer for that is also no. Capital First carried zero goodwill on its books, meaning it did not carry any, any of these intangible items on its books. It's nothing to do with Capital First. It is a premium paid to Capital First shareholders, which is being uh, accounted for on the, top, on, on the goodwill and later being charged off. It's neutral to shareholders. In fact, uh, the, the book value is actually, which would have otherwise been 37 rupees, has now gone to 38.25 because of the, 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 the goodwill accounting. Just I'm happy to have clarified that to you for shareholders. You know, last time when we met, you also said the integration was on, that was keeping you busy, uh, and I hope to see much more of you going forward on the channel. And by the way, are you back to your routine on uh, for your morning jogs and morning walks on Wally Seafairs? Or the merger process will keep you busy? Um, well, I must uh, honest uh, answer is that uh, it's been uh, very stressful uh, because for the last uh, many months, uh, uh, you know, the early mornings don't permit us uh, those luxuries, but I do hope that in the next one year we can get to that. Uh, I must say not only for myself, but for many of the colleagues, uh, without exaggeration, it's been anywhere between uh, 12 to uh, sometimes 16 hour days uh, putting this integration to. Uh, but uh, we are quite happy the way it has shaped out, and I'm very confident that when this merger is complete, uh, you know, the results will be, uh, will be good for all, and we will be hopefully back to our normal schedule. Good to have you. Good luck and thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nikunj.